All right, I've used Table Monkey and Measure Table Monkey to go in and create some of the foundations of my data model, but what I don't have yet is a calendar table. And there's a variety of recipes and ways you can create your calendar tables. My personal favorite though is a calendar pattern that I use inside my books to dynamically generate a fiscal year calendar that always refreshes based on the earliest and latest dates in my data. So it always covers the entire data range. And I've got a beautiful user interface for this. It's called the Calendar Monkey. You'll find it under the Query Monkeys menu right here, Calendar Monkey. This will do a little bit of analysis on your workbook. We're looking through your staging queries as well as your loading queries to figure out what columns you have in place and what data types they have so that we can provide you with a very smart monkey here. You'll notice you have the ability to change between a 12 month and other calendar types. I'll get into those in a different video. We have the ability to choose a different year end as well. Again, I'll get into those a little bit later. Define your calendar table name, choose where you want it to load to, and you have the option to trim it. Now, what trimming does, it says, based on the earliest and latest date in your data model, will only give you a calendar that spans that range. I don't recommend you ever do that. That's why this box is unchecked. We want to make sure that your calendar runs the entire fiscal year you're dealing with. It's just a smarter thing that helps future-proof your DAX measures so that they don't fall off the end of the table and give you all where they should be giving you nothing. Okay, so generally, unless you've got a really good reason, don't trim your calendar. Now the next part here sort of leans towards the strength of where Calendar Monkey comes in. What it's asking you for is what is the column inside your data model that is going to contain the earliest date that will ever happen. We can take a look at all the different options here. It scans through all the queries. For me, I believe that my sales table is always going to have the earliest date, but I don't like to read from my sales table. I actually want to read from my staging sales table. This is something I'll teach you more about if you come and take one of my courses, why staging over the regular sales. But the nice part here is that when I click on this, it will now give me a nice curated list of all of the columns that actually use a date format. There's only one, it's called date. Now, if it can't enumerate your tables for any reason, you can go and you can type in your column name here. You're just gonna to wanna to make sure that you use a valid column name so that everything can work properly. Uh, my latest date, because I always budget before sales happen, so my budget's always gonna be out in the future, I'm gonna go and pick up my staging budgets table here. And again, you'll notice there's only one column in this table called date that will work. Once I've got there, I can click next. And at this point, it comes back and it says, well, which column, column formats would you like? And there's a whole bunch of them here. You can check the boxes for whatever you like. I'm gonna go with the defaults here. This is just fine for me. And what I'm gonna do is I'm now gonna choose next. At this point, it asks me, what would you like to set up for relationships? Now, if I had chosen sales date and budget date originally, it would have automatically checked the boxes. But because I went from the staging table, it doesn't know for sure, so it wants me to disambiguate this. So I'm just gonna check the box on both of those. There we go. And now I'm gonna hit create. And you'll see that as it works here now, it's gonna create a start date, which is the earliest date in the data model for the fiscal year, and an end date. And then it creates the calendar query itself. It also, however, gives you a little bit of information down the bottom here saying, look, we need you to do a couple of different things that we can't do for you. And I wish we could, but Microsoft doesn't give me APIs to do these. The two things are hide your foreign key and put in your sorting order so you can sort your months and your day names appropriately. So here's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna hit close. I'm gonna hop in to take a look at the data model. Let me just make this a little bit bigger here. We'll take as much space as we can on uh, this interface. I'm gonna hop into the diagram view and what we can see here is we have our calendar table is all set up with the columns that I picked and it's all generated by Power Query so you can go and you can add things to it and change things if you want to. But the key things that we're looking for here is that we recommend you hide the field on the many side of the relationship. So as a matter of fact, I'm actually gonna do this with all of these because I'm gonna aggregate my amounts differently. I'm gonna have my category here as a foreign key, so we're gonna hide that. Anything on the star side of the relationship we wanna hide. So I'm gonna do the same thing over here on the sales table as well. We'll hide those. But we'll leave this one visible because we may wanna put it on a pivot table. So this is the first thing. The important part is the item on the star side of the relationship, date, must be hidden. Once again, date here must be hidden. Now it's just gonna make sure that your pivot tables are set up correctly so they're not throwing errors or allowing you to accidentally use the wrong fields. Now the second component that I wish I could do for you is if we go to data view and we flip over to the calendar table, I really wish I could do this. 
I wish I could take your month column here, this month short in this case, and set up the sort order to sort my month short by my month number. There's no visible change to the user interface here, but now when I drag this field onto a pivot table, it's gonna sort it based on this numeric order rather than the alphabetical order. So the two that I generally recommend, so we do month short by your fiscal month, whatever it is, and day short by your day of week. So here we go, sort by column. We're gonna go and sort this one by our day of week, which is just outside the fold there. There we go, and say okay. And at this point, the calendar is now fully set up and ready to use on a pivot table once I've got some measures ready to go. It'll sort correctly, everything's gonna work, and when I hit refresh, it will dynamically expand to grab the entire fiscal period that leads from whatever the earliest date is all the way to the end, and it will actually give me the entire fiscal year for the whole thing, which is fantastic. So there you go. That's how we can very quickly go and set up a calendar table using the Calendar Monkey. Thanks for watching this episode of Using Monkey Tools. To get your own monkey, visit our website at monkeytools.ca. Or if you subscribe to Skillwave Self-Service Business Intelligence Academy, you'll get a free annual pro license included with your subscription. And remember, Monkey Tools was developed to support better Excel and Power BI solutions. If you want to learn how to really master these tools, you should definitely check out our full course catalog at skillwave.training.